Hello and welcome to day 25 of the Halloween Craft Countdown, where I'm releasing a new Cricut Craft every day for the whole of October. Today's project is one which combines a design space tutorial with a physical craft tutorial at the end. For day two of this challenge, I released some luminary designs and I had so much positive feedback that I knew I wanted to do more luminaries as part of the challenge. So for these ones, rather than have a design which you can download and use, we're gonna be designing them together in Design Space. I've created a basic template for you, which I will share, and then you can use these with any images in Cricut Access or any SVGs that you've got from anywhere to design your very own customized luminaries. And although these are being done for Halloween, you could do them for any occasion at all. So perhaps Christmas luminaries, wedding luminaries, or anything you can think of. So head on to the link in the description below, get the template for the basic shape of the luminary, and then I'll show you how to make it truly yours and truly special. When you open up the free design space project, it looks like this. So you have two sides of the luminary, which are in gray, and then the four yellow rectangles are the bits which you'll cut out of um, thinner paper, maybe a tracing paper or um, tissue paper or crepe paper to fill the holes um, with a color that will let the light still shine through. So we're gonna add some pictures into the middle of these gray ones, but first I'll just show you how the layers work. So the very top group, that is your four yellow rectangles, so you don't need to worry about that one. The next two are the um, different pieces of gray. And in order to let us add the um, pictures to the middle, so inside these white rectangles, we just need to click on each of these ones that says attach at the top and press detach. And I'm gonna do it one at a time. So this one is the bottom one. So I will add the pictures to this one first. Now that that main one is detached, you'll see you've still got these two which are attached. That's the score line. So that's okay to leave as it is. The reason we needed to detach it is to get this slice result layer, which is the actual squares that we're gonna add our pictures to. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit so it's easier to see. And then go into images and choose some Halloween images. So let's go for some bats. And then maybe a pumpkin to go in the other one. I'll do a different picture for each of the four sides. Now you want to choose images that are fairly simple because this is all going to be cut out of one colour. Um, and also something where all the pieces are connected. So this pumpkin here, this orange one on the far right, that's no good because all of the bits are separate. So as soon as you try to cut out your luminary, it would all fall apart. So I'm just gonna have a little look and try and find some pumpkin. And I think that one's gonna work quite well. So let's insert those two and see what we've got. All right, so I'll do the bat one first. I'm gonna change the color to gray so that it matches my rectangle and then see how this is gonna look. So you want to make sure that the image overlaps the white square on both sides so that when you cut this out, it will be connected. So I'll show you how to merge these layers together in a minute, but for now, let's just get everything into position. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the pumpkin on this side. And I want to make sure that the edges of the image don't go outside of the score lines for this section, because if they do, then um, it might start going into the next side, which I don't want. So let's see, one pumpkin, and then let's put another one resting on the top. Okay, so that'll be two of my sides done. So now, if I was to cut this out, it's gonna cut around the edge of the bats and the pumpkin still. It's not gonna join them together with the luminary. So we need to join it all together, but first, I'm just gonna hide the score lines. So click on the score lines, which is what says attach, and then you'll know if it's the right one because it highlights it over the top of the bit you're working on. I'm just gonna hide that layer, and then I'm gonna select all the other ones in the layers panel by clicking one, pressing control on my keyboard, and then choosing all of the ones in this section. So I've got the two pumpkins, the two bats, and this gray shape. And then down the bottom of the layers panel, I'm going to click weld. 
And now that's joined them all together, so this is one continuous piece. So now I can turn the score lines back on by clicking the eye icon, click and drag it to the top so that I can see them, and then select the score lines, press control on my keyboard and choose the um, world result, which is my luminary, and then down the bottom of the layers panel, press attach. And it's really important you do that because that attach is what makes the Cricut machine actually score on the same bit of card as the luminary. If you don't attach it, then it will try scoring on a completely different bit of card, which is kind of pointless. All right, so that's that first one done and I'll just show you again on this one. So I'm gonna click this one so that I know which layer it is in the layers panel. And then if I open this up with a little arrow, you can see I've got everything in here. But just like I did with the top one, I need to detach this first. So press detach down the bottom. And now I can go and choose my images. So I might do just search for Halloween this time and see what comes up. I'm thinking I'd quite like a little black cat if I can find one. Um, let's see what we got. I quite like the hat, but I think I'll take out the wording because that would be quite hard to cut. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, that's quite a cute little ghost. Um, let's have two different ghosts. And then to go with the witch's hat, let's search for black cat and put in one of these. Um, I want one that's quite simple. I might go for this one and just contour out the face because that would be a little bit too small to cut out effectively. All right, so here are all of my pictures. There's this witch's hat and I'm gonna take out the writing. So to do that, click the image and then go into contour down the very bottom right. Press hide all contours and then close that window and that's got rid of the wording. Oops. So let's move the witch's hat and then I'm also going to add the black cat over here. And this one I'm not gonna connect on the left. I think it's good enough because it's connecting to the witch's hat and the bottom and the right hand side. So I think that's fine. But I am going to just contour out um, the face because I think that would be a bit too hard to cut out and then the witch's hat I'm just going to make that same shade of grey. Okay so my ghosts are going on this one let's position these and change the colour to grey so it all matches. I just find it's easier to see if it's all the same colour. Alright, so this bottom ghost, he isn't connected on the right, but again, that's okay because he's still connected to the other ghost, to the left and the bottom. So now, just like we did before, I'm going to hide those score lines by clicking the eye icon next to where they are in the layers panel. Select all of my images for this section, so the two ghosts, the witch's hat and the cat, and also select the grey rectangle behind it, and then down the bottom, press weld. Now I can drag those score lines back to the top. And what I'm also gonna do just while I'm here is get rid of this little gap in between the ghost and the edge because that's really small. I think that'd be a little bit hard to cut out. So I'm gonna click it, go into contour, and then just click on that little gap and that will hide it. I can turn on my score layers by clicking the eye in the layers panel and then I just need to attach this all together so that it will score on the correct bit of card. So click the, the um, score lines, press control on your keyboard and choose the rectangle and then down the bottom press attach. And then there is our customized luminary all ready to cut out. So I can go ahead and click make it and it will connect to my Cricut machine and I'm going to change it to A4 paper because that's what I've got. There we go, that's annoying, I'll have to use two. Actually, my grease proof paper I'm gonna use, I could do as 12 by 12. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so now that I've got this, 
I can go ahead and continue and cut it out from whatever materials I choose. So I'm going to use some medium cardstock for the luminary sides and then I'm going to use some um, kind of semi-transparent paper. Um, so you could use vellum, greaseproof paper, tracing paper, anything like that for the um, inserts. And when I get onto that one, I will change the material type probably to light cardstock. Um, or possibly copy paper. I haven't quite decided, but it definitely won't need to be on medium cardstock. All right, so go ahead and cut out your luminary and then I will show you how to stick it all together. So here are my pieces cut out. I've got the two parts of the luminary and then my semi-transparent bits of paper to go in the holes. So first I'm gonna fold along the score lines because that's easiest to do before you add the paper into the middle. So I'm just going to turn each one upside down and then just fold inwards along those score lines and just press down to get a nice crisp fold. There's that side and then I'll do the same on this one. So I've turned it upside down and I'm just folding down those two score lines to get a nice crisp line. Okay so um, now that that has been folded I can stick the bits of paper to the inside. You can either do this with double sided tape or with glue. I think I will use maybe just a bit of Pritt stick glue. Uh, I think that should hold it. We'll see. So I'm just going to go down all the edges with a glue stick. all the way along. I'm not going to leave any gaps because I want it to have a nice firm stick. And then you could add a bit to the backs of the pictures as well just to give it a few extra places it can stick to. And then just take the paper and stick it over the hole. I'm just going to push down to make sure that's got a nice good stick. So you're not going to see the inside of the luminary when it's all made, so you don't need to worry about being too neat with your glue, just as long as all those sides are nicely stuck down. So on this one I'm just adding some glue to the insides of these pumpkins, and again along the edge. Make sure you don't add your glue to the tab bits that we folded, because that's what we're going to use to stick the two sides of the luminary together. So I've got lots of glue on that one. I can take another one of my little pieces, oops, stuck that on there, and just stick it over the gap and make sure it's nicely stuck down. I'm not worrying about getting it even on all the different sides because like I said you're not going to see that. Alright, so now I've got the other side to do. And the reason we folded it along those score lines before sticking the um, paper on the inside is that otherwise if you fold it after you've stuck it, the action of actually doing that first fold can sometimes cause the um, greaseproof paper to sort of pop off so it comes apart from the glue. But that won't happen now because we've already done the main folds. So that's just saving us from a bit of hassle further down the line. Okay, I've just got one more to do, which is my ghosts. So just add some glue in the middle here and a bit along the edge. And then the top and the bottom. There we go. And then I've got the last bit that I can just stick over. Push it down and there we go, that is my um, semi-transparent paper all stuck. So I've got a bit of glue there where I managed to stick it on top of the other one by mistake earlier. 
but generally because we've used a glue stick it means it won't um, you know seep out the edges so it's quite a nice way to do it all right so whilst that is drying I can prepare the double-sided tape to stick the two sides of the luminary together and double-sided tape does work better than glue now because if you use glue you'll have to hold the sides together for ages for the glue to dry um, but with double-sided tape it means as soon as you put it on there it is stuck so I'm going to go down each of the tabs so how this is going to work is we're just going to stick the sides together and then bend it round into a square shape so I want to make this the right way up this time so this is the front and then I'm going to put the double sided tape all the way down that tab on the side on the front of the luminary design so let's put my tape all the way down so it will have a nice firm stick along that whole edge and I'm going to do the same on the other one so just a bit of tape all the way down the front of that tab okay so let's peel the tape off one side at a time and then if I fold the tab inwards get this design here and then I'm gonna stick the sticky side of the tab to the side of the luminary that doesn't have the tab on it on this one so I'm sticking my pumpkins to my witch's hat and you just line it up so that all of that tab gets stuck to that side so you can see now that it's almost coming together into our rectangle we just need to stick this tab to the back of the one remaining side so I can take the backing off and then I'm just gonna fold it into my rectangle shape and stick that tab to the inside of my one remaining side to stick it all together into a rectangle so that is my luminary ready so I've got a nice big battery powered pillar candle make sure you use a battery one not a real one because obviously that would be a mega fire risk um, but battery ones is fine so I'm just going to place that in the middle and then when it's dark in the living room it's going to glow through the um, the sides of the paper to create a really nice effect now I have cut this one really big because my candles were big but you could easily resize it in design space before you cut it out to make a smaller one so maybe for um, votive style candles which are much smaller or even just some fairy lights you could put in the top and that will give you an even better glow out of all of the four sides. So I hope you enjoyed designing and then putting together your Halloween luminary although of course this could be done for any um, holiday or maybe even birthdays it doesn't have to be for Halloween if you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel for loads more Cricut crafts and design space tutorials I've been releasing a new Halloween craft every day in October so check out my other videos for loads more spooky crafts thank you for watching bye